Hi guys, so I was recently helping somebody troubleshoot their server where their hard drives were not showing up in the system. And what we discovered was that this person was having problems with this new thing called the power disable feature that comes with a lot of modern hard drives. Specifically, if you have a SAS 3 hard drive or a newer SATA hard drive that meets the SATA 3.3 specification, then it's likely that that hard drive will support this new thing called power disable. And if you have it plugged into the uh, power connector uh, from a legacy system or maybe a backplane from a legacy system, uh, it will cause your hard drive to not power up. And so what this feature is, is basically hard drive manufacturers have added this new feature to uh, recent hard drives that allows you to programmatically dis disconnect uh, power uh, from the hard drive. And so, you know, this could be useful potentially if you needed to reset a hard drive for whatever reason. And traditionally, you would have to unplug the hard drive and plug it back in or unplug the power cable and plug it back in. And now you can actually do it in software with the power disable feature. However, this causes a problem if you're connecting your hard drive to a legacy SATA connector. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about why that is. And then more importantly, I'm going to talk about what you can do uh, if, you're, if you're encountering this problem. What can you do to fix this problem? And so first, the most uh, useful information I found online was this uh, Hitachi Western Digital document. It's about three pages long, and I'll leave a link in the description for you to download this if you want to read it yourself. But basically it tells you about what the power disable feature is, what I just described. It's uh, part of the SATA 3.3 specification. It's also part of the SAS 3 specification. And uh, Hitachi has also kind of kindly listed a bunch of hard drives that uh, specifically do not have this feature. So if you haven't bought your hard drives yet and you suspect you're going to have this problem, you know, maybe it makes sense to uh, look for hard drives that specifically do not have this feature and you can avoid the problem altogether. And in addition to that, there's a, a nice Q&A section and some information about the pinout to the uh, power connector, which I'm going to talk about today. So anyway, um, if you're interested, the download link for this document will be in the, uh, the description. So Let's talk about the SATA power connector. So traditionally, the power connector has 15 pins, and the first three pins are labeled as 3.3 volts. There's ground, then five volts, then ground, and then 12 volts. And so this is what you uh, might have in an, an older computer system. However, now that's changed. Because the 3.3 volt wasn't really being used, the new specification has now reserved those pins for other things. So there's, the first two pins are now reserved, which basically means they're not being used. But the third pin, as you can see, is labeled PWDIS here, is now used for this power disable. And so what happens is that if you apply 3.3 volts to this third pin, it effectively tells these new hard drives to shut off. And then when you pull power uh, away from that pin, then the hard drives will be able to power back on again. And so this, this third pin now is being used to programmatically uh, reset, uh, power reset uh, hard drives when you, when you need to do so. Well, that causes a problem, as you can see, comparing it to the legacy uh, power connector that applies a 3.3 volt uh, to that third pin. So what happens is when you, when you uh, connect a hard drive with this power disable feature to a legacy SATA power connector, it's going to permanently keep the hard drive shut off. And so if you encounter this, you'll probably think like, wow, you know, what's going on? Why is my hard drive, you know, my brand new hard drive not showing up? Well, uh, you know, take a look at the specifications uh, on your hard drive and see if it supports power disable. And then I will also, I'm going to also talk, tell you how to find out if your power connector uh, has 3.3 volts. So, Right here we have a SATA uh, power connector. And the easiest way to figure out whether your power connector has 3.3 volts or not is to simply count the wires that are coming out of the connector. And so usually you're gonna have a yellow line that's 12 volts, 
you have the black for ground, and then you have a red line uh, for five volts, and then another ground. And in this particular case, this is actually a, a cable that does not have 3.3 volts, but if you had one that had 3.3 volts, you're going to see a third wire, or sorry, a fifth wire coming out here that supports the 3.3 volt line. And so the easiest way to tell is simply to count these. If you see four different wires coming out of your uh, SATA uh, power connector, then that connector probably doesn't have 3.3 uh, volts. If you see five, then there's a possibility that that has 3.3 volts. And if you're plugging that into a modern hard drive that supports power disable, it's likely the hard drive will not spin up. Now, this cable is actually a Molex to SATA power adapter cable. And this is actually one of the ways you can solve this problem. So on the traditional Molex four pin connector here, you have a red line for five volts, two grounds in the middle, and a 12 volt line. And so the four pins here don't have a 3.3 volt source. And so if you are converting a Molex to a SATA power connector, there's no way you're going to have 3.3 volts. And so this is one way to solve uh, this problem. If, you, if your hard drives are not spinning up because of power disable, then see if you have some Molex connectors, buy some of these adapters and power your hard drives with one of these adapters that will avoid applying 3.3 volts to that third pin that disables the hard drive. Now, this isn't always an option for everybody. If it is, that's great. It's a fairly cheap uh, way to solve this problem. These cables are only a couple bucks usually. But a lot of people are plugging their hard drives into a hard drive enclosure or to a backplane on a server. And in that case, you're not plugging uh, a cable directly into the hard drive. You're plugging power into the backplane and the backplane is supplying power to the hard drive. So in that case, you can't really use something like this. So let's take a look at, this is what I have here is a, is a SAS 3 4 terabyte Hitachi hard drive. And so this supports power disable. And you'll see here, this is the power connector. And pin one is over here. Um, it's usually where the, the middle notch is, starts from there. And so one, two, three, this long uh, pin right here is the pin three, which is for power disable. And so that's, that's the problem if you're not um, seeing your hard drive spin up. There's uh, a 3.3 volts being applied to that pin and causing the hard drive to not spin up. Now, there are many ways to solve this. I've heard of people doing rather drastic measures and say, you know, using a knife and just cutting this electrical connection. That um, is one way to solve this problem, but I, I tend to choose non-destructive ways because you never know at some point in the future, you might have a system where you want to use the power disable feature and then you won't be able to if you had permanently cut that line. But there's a easier way to solve this problem. And basically you need to cover this pin so that the, the it doesn't make electrical contact with the other side. And the proper way to do this is probably to get something called Tapcon tape, uh, which looks a little bit like this stuff right here. but you know really all you really need is some tape that is smooth and thin and and not electrically conductive and so what i like to use that's uh fairly uh convenient for this is this thing right here now what this is is uh it's label tape from a p-touch labeler and you can use anything else but i actually like this because the adhesive, the adhesive on this is fairly uh fairly good and it also has a smooth surface. So when you apply this tape and the other electrical uh, pin is coming over um, this connector, it, you know, because this is so smooth, it'll just slide right over instead of like maybe pushing on it or, or, or moving the tape around. So I, I, I'd like to use these things uh, to, to address uh, issues like this. And so let's, if we take a measurement of this pin, it's roughly about one millimeter wide and about four millimeters long. And so all we have to do is cut a little strip of this tape. And I'm just gonna kind of estimate what one millimeter is because I 
I'm fairly familiar with the uh, metric system, and I think I've got a good feel for that. So we're just going to cut a little bit of this tape. Okay, so there we have a, a tiny strip, about one millimeter wide, and we need something roughly four millimeters long. So that's, that's not a whole lot, that's just less than half of this thing here. So let me get my ruler uh, roughly where four millimeters might be. Let's see. Okay. And then we'll just cut off this excess that we don't need. Okay. And so this is all the tape that we're actually going to need. It's a tiny little strip. I'm going to go ahead and try to apply this. Um, might be easier if you had tweezers perhaps, but I'm kind of used to doing these kind of things with uh, just a little hobby knife. And so all we have to do is get this tape over the third pin and just like that. I'm going to use the back of my hobby knife here just to kind of rub the tape down to make sure it's holding. Okay, and so as long as you're covering the third pin knife, if your tape is a little bit wide, you know, um, just move it a little bit to the left here. It doesn't matter if you cover pin one or, or pin two. So long as you're not covering pin three through 15, you're, you'll be fine. Um, and as long as you're covering pin three so that it doesn't uh, make electrical contact with your back plane or your power connector, um, then it should not uh, enable that power disable feature. So that's all it is. Uh, that's all you need to do to solve uh, this problem if you're having it. And, and again, you know, if you don't want to do something like this or that's just too tedious and, and you can use a... Uh, a power adapter like this, that might be the easier way to go. But either way, uh, this is not a problem that uh, can't be solved. And so there you have it. So hopefully, um, I imagine that some of other people will, will run into this. So hopefully this video uh, will be helpful to anybody who's uh, having this particular problem. And uh, if you don't know, I have an eBay store called The Art of Server, where I sell uh, pre-flashed uh, HBA SAS controllers in IT mode for people who are building servers uh, with FreeNAS or ZFS or uh, Unraid, anything that requires an HBA card. So I'll, link, I'll leave a link in the description to my eBay store. So hopefully uh, if you guys need anything of that sort, uh, please check out my store and uh, let me know if you have any other questions. All right, that's it. Thanks.